This video will be our first look at uh, Excel user forms. Excel user forms allow us to build what looks like a real program within the Microsoft Excel environment. And when I say that, I mean you can actually use user interface elements like buttons and text boxes and check boxes and radio buttons and so on and have the user interact with your Excel environment through your user-defined user form. I guess that's a little redundant. To do this, of course, we have to be in the Visual Basic environment, so let's go in there. And it's to insert a user form is very similar to inserting a, uh, a module. I'll click on my Insert menu. And the Insert menu, of course, gives you the user form and the module and class module options. So instead of inserting a module, we'll just insert a user form. Now, once I insert the user form, you see the area that you have here for actually building your user interface. And you see the little toolbox of the various tools we have for uh, for building our user interface. And, and we can just kind of scan over some of these. There's the label, and there's a text box, and this is a combo box. It's like a drop-down menu, and a list box. And there's a check box and a radio button like you'd expect. And here's a toggle button that's on-off. And here's a frame for holding user interface elements. And then we have the button, command button. It's just a button. So anyway, we've got all kinds of nice things here to build our user interface with. But before we actually build a simple user form, I, I want to take a look at the properties options. So I'm going to click on my user form in the project window. And I, am, I want you to notice below in the properties window, in fact, you can expand this up because we don't need all that extra space up there in our project window. So the name of our user form is just user form one. Now you can name that whatever you want. You, you could call it, uh, you could call it, uh, let's say, form uh, program entry. I don't know. Let's call that program entry. Program entry. Um, and it's just like naming a variable, so you can't put spaces in it, and you can't start with strange characters and so on. But now I've just called it program entry. That's the that's the variable name, if you will, of my user form. And then if we scroll down on our properties window, we scroll down, we scroll down, we scroll down, you'll notice that we have quite a few uh, options here for our user form. Um, scroll bar, text, you know, left, you can specify where it is on the screen, the left side of it, and so on. Um, I'm sure there's going to have to be like a height property somewhere. Yeah, there's the height property. 235.5 I think that's probably in pixels and uh, in fact we can expand this sideways here to see a little bit more of what those are now we're not going to use a lot of these but uh, here's where does the user form start the start position user form and it centers on the owner which would be your Excel sheet um, centered on the screen um, you know, I'd have to look some of these up. I don't know what a lot of these are, but uh, we've got all these different properties here. There's the width property, um, and so on. So we can scroll on up here. There's the background color and the border color, and so on. And here's the caption. And you'll notice right at the top of my user form over here, the actual user form, it says user form one. So we we can change the caption of that. We can call this, you know, Peter's form. And so now there's a, a new caption on my user form. So uh, there's, like I said, there's lots of options here, and, and I don't know what half of them do. I have to always look these things up. I just don't carry them around in my head. So let's take a look at uh, actually building something on our user form, and we're going to start simple, like I said. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going we're gonna to put a text box on the user form. So I'm just going to click over here on the A, B button, and then I come over to my user form, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just drag out a text box. And there's my text box. And you'll notice that uh, when that text box is selected, over in the properties window, it shows that I have indeed the text box selected. So a very important thing that you really should do, anytime you add a new element to your user form, you should immediately name it. So I'm going to go ahead and name this TXT to indicate it's a text box. Just a little consistent prefix. And I'm going to name it output. So txt output. That's what I'm going to call that. And you know, if you scroll on down, you notice there's a font option here, so you can you can click the font option. Let's say we want to make that font a little bit bigger in our text box, so we, we can make it a 16-point font. You know, you got the bold and you got the various font names and so on. So I just made it bigger. And you can change the color and different things like this, and you can specify the size of your 
text box here and all that, but it's easier just to drag it by one of its little handles. You can also put text into the text box if you wish. You can actually have text already in the text box. You'll notice that there's the text property. So if I just type something in the text box here, I can, I can just say, uh, you know, hello, and notice how it's showing up in the text box. Well, I want the text box to be empty to start with, so I'm just going to leave that blank. So there's our text box. Now, what I'd like to do is I'd like to add a, a button to my user form. So I'm, I'm going to look around here on my little palette of tools here, and, and there's the command button. So I'm just going to drag out a command button here. I'm just going to drag it in the middle there. And immediately then, that's my command button. And immediately you'll notice again in the properties window, you get all of the properties for the command button. Now you should almost always, always name your elements right after you add them to your user form. So I'm going to click there and I'm going to call this CMD for command. You could call it BTN. I, I, maybe I actually like BTN better. And so I'm going to call this BTN do it. You know, because it's going to it's going to be the button that does stuff. Um, so that's the name of the object, if you will. And then again, you have the font option. So if you want to change the font of your text there, you can make that a little bit bigger. You can make it bold if you want it to stand out. So there's the text. And notice also the, the label here on my button. Well, remember that was the caption of the form. Well, here we have the caption of the button. So I'm just going to change that to click me. And so there's our, there's our little user form. It's got a text box and it's got a button. Now, here comes the kind of interesting part. What we'd like is we'd like a little procedure to execute when somebody clicks on that button right there. So what we need to do is we need to go into the code for this button. Every user interface element you add to your form actually has its own code. So if I double click the button, let's go ahead and see what happens. Well, I double click the button and you immediately you'll notice that it opens up a, a private sub, but don't worry about the fact that it's private right now, but it's a subroutine, and it names it the same as my button. That's one reason why you want to name the elements as soon as you add them to your user form. Because if you forget, and you come back and you name it later, then you're going to have a bunch of code that has different names than your actual button does, and things get really crazy. So name your user form elements as soon as you add them. So this is the click event, if you will, for that button. And so what I would like to do is I'd like to change the text property of my user form. So I'm just going to say, OK, here's my, here's my um, text output. And I would like to change the text of that particular object. And it has a text property there. I'd like to change the text of that to say, hello world, when the user clicks this button. So I'm going to go back into the code there. And I'm going to, I'm going to give the name of my text area. My text area was txt. And if I and if I just uh, hit the control space bar, there's nothing else that starts with txt, so it puts the rest of the name in there. So it's called text output. That's the name of my text box. And I want to change its text property. So I say dot te, and it pops up the little pick list. And so I want to say text output dot text, and that's just a string. So I'm going to say text output dot text is set equal to hello world. And so when the user clicks a button, it's going to call this subroutine. And this subroutine basically changes the text property of my, uh, of my text box. Now we somehow have to get the, we have to somehow get this uh, user form visible on the screen. Now I'm going to show you one way to do this. Um, the user form, again, if we, if we go in, it's called program entry. Um, so that's the name of my user form. And I'm going to go to the, this workbook. And if I double click on this workbook up above here, you'll notice it shows me that, you know, here's the workbook option. And there is a bunch of different things you can do with the workbook and, and sheet activate. Well, what I want is I want when the, when the, uh, actually I don't want it when the workbook opens, but I could show you that. Really, I think what I want is when the sheet opens. So I'm going to double click on sheet one here. And you'll notice that uh, when I'm on sheet one, I can go up here and I can say worksheet. And then when I can say worksheet, and I can scroll through all of the options in the worksheet here. So when the worksheet is activated, there's a subroutine for the worksheet activated. Now we're going to have to stop here because I'm running out of time on this video. But what we're going to do is we're going to show that user form when the worksheet is activated. So I'm going to delete this one. So I'm going to go ahead and stop right here, and then I'm going to pick it up in part two.